a couple of different times in some of these discussions. The increased work of breathing is, is a result of um, narrowing of the airways and um, different gas laws. But I really want to dive in to what this concept of work of breathing is. I want to dive in to it um, more quantitatively today. So I think it's fair that we kind of uh, lay out some groundwork, some foundational concepts, first of all. And um, I just want to go ahead and redux some basic physical concepts. So the first basic physical concept that I want to redux is what is the concept of work? What is work in a physics frame of reference? And work is quite simply a force and of course that's a vector quantity so we'll put a little vector over that times distance okay so it is a product of force and distance now I think it is also fair that we uh, go ahead and define in, in the respiratory physics frame of reference what I mean by force and what I mean by distance because they're a little different than the distance and force um, that we may be used to um, in a more conventional context. So force in this case is going to be pressure times volume or the product of pressure and volume whereas distance is going to be volume divided by area. Okay, So we're talking now about uh, three dimensions because I'm filling a lung that is in essence a three-dimensional um, sac that will be filled with air. Okay, so what I can do is now that I have all of these concepts is I can rewrite this and I can say work equals pressure times area, the product of that multiplied by volume divided by area. And of course that's going to be equivalent to pressure times volume times volume. Okay, so we've laid the groundwork of what work is. And when we talk about the, the unit of measurement, of course, the unit of measurement that we want to fall out of all this is going to be the joule. Joule is a unit of measurement for energy and for work. And as we know, work and energy are actually um, related. You know, energy is what, uh, well, it's really a circular concept. Um, we use joule to define both. Okay, so now that we have the foundational stuff here, I'm going to go ahead and erase this. You guys can feel free to, to rewind and go back and redux that um, if, if, you want, if you're taking notes or if you're interested. If you're not, you can just fast forward a little bit. Okay, so we have the foundational material out of the way. So what I want to do now is I, is I just want to make the assumption. I'm going to make an assumption here, um, an axiom, if you will, that air pressure, okay, air pressure in the lung... Okay, so we're talking about pressure here, varies with volume. Okay, I hope that makes sense because this relates to all those gas laws that we've already talked about. That we know that pressure and volume share a very special relationship. So can I not say that pressure is a function of volume? Or rather, um, yeah, pressure is a function of volume. Can I not say that pressure is a function of volume? If I can say that, and I can actually, then what I can do is I can rewrite all that stuff, and uh, this is kind of where it gets a little more complicated, but we'll work through it. I can rewrite this as an integral, as an integration, which is very different if you're familiar with um, differential equations. Um, this is sort of like the opposite of a differential equation. Don't worry, we'll work our way through this. So, what I can say is the work of inhaling or inspiration 
is going to equal the integral of the FRC, the functional residual capacity, uh, between FRC, that's, that this is the, um, the limit that I'm looking at here, these are the limits I'm setting, between the FRC um, and the FRC plus the VT, or the tidal volume. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is, is in there, I'm going to be looking at pressure, okay, um, derivative of, of volume, okay, so this is a pressure here, this is an infinitesimal of volume, the derivative, added to the lung, and um, this will be in centimeters of water, or milliliters, if we're talking about the volume. Okay, so the PDV, D being the infinitesimal um, that we're familiar with, the derivative. Okay, so if I'm integrating and I'm assuming that air pressure in the lung varies with volume, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm integrating, and, and, and integration is just a way of, of finding an area underneath a curve, and we'll talk about why that's important here. So basically what I'm doing is I'm looking at the functional residual capacity. And what is a functional residual capacity? Well, the functional residual capacity is nothing more than the air that's left in the lungs after I exhale. So I take a normal breath. I inhale, I exhale. Whatever's left behind is a functional residual capacity. Now, if I'm starting at the functional residual capacity, my, my integration starts there and it ends at the FRC plus the tidal volume. So basically what I'm doing is my integration is simply whatever the tidal volume is. That's my interval is the tidal volume. So 500, so if I start, let's say my FRC is, is 200 milliliters, and then my FRC plus VT is 700 milliliters, well, I'm integrating between 500 mils of volume, right? I start at 200, I finish at 700. My interval is going to be a volume of 500 milliliters. So that's what I'm integrating between, and I'm looking at pressure and volume between that integration. Now, obviously, I, I need to find the antiderivative and all that to actually make this, this, this integration work. Okay, well, that's great. That's one relationship. The other relationship is, well... Can pressure also be a function of time? Can pressure, pressure be a function of time? And the answer to that question is yes, absolutely. If I'm inhaling over a certain interval of time, my inspiratory time, for example, is my pressure not going to change during that interval time that I inhale? And the answer to that should be an axiom. It should be self-evident that, yep, pressure should change. So um, I don't need to prove that, right? There's no mathematical proof. It is an axiom. It's axiomatic that we, we know that, yeah, pressure has to change because we know that volume changes over time, and we already know that pressure is a function of volume. So I can also rewrite my integral. I can rewrite those limits in terms of time. So I can also say that the work of inspiration or inhaling is going to be equal to the integral between T1 and T2. Okay? And of course, that's going to be PT it's going to be pressure at a certain time, okay? Because we're looking at the pressure at a very certain time. Um, let's say my inspiratory time is one second, and I'm going to look at that pressure at 0.8 seconds into that one second interval. Boom! That's the P of T. Pressure at a specific instant of time, and I'm going to be looking at flow at a specific interval of time, and obviously I have dt as well, of time. So I'm now I'm integrating not, be, not between um, a volume, functional residual capacity plus tidal volume, 
but I'm integrating between T1 and T2. And what is T1 and T2? The integration is nothing more than my inspiratory time. Okay, nothing more than my inspiratory time. All right, well, is there a way that we can make sense of this in day-to-day -day physics, in a, in a um, formula, in a, an equation that is not exceedingly difficult to integrate? And there actually is. There is another formula that we can look at, and that is if I take the peak inspiratory pressure, okay, 0 0.5, subtract 0 0.5 times the P plat, the plateau pressure, divided by the tidal volume times 100, okay, equals work of breathing. And the unit that should fall out of that should be in joules. Now, is there another way that I can look at this in exceedingly simpli simplified um, notation or concept? And the most simple way, qualitatively looking at it now, uh, versus quantitative actually getting number, is going to be, it's nothing more than the change in pressure, 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 right? times the change in volume. Okay, that's the simplest way of looking at it. But we know that pressure and volume are also functions of time. Okay, time. They're function of time. So, when we talk about all this integration business, and we talk about pressure being a function of time, specifically. So pressure is a function of time, okay? Pressure is a function of time. Pressure is a function of time, and if pressure is a function of time, what am I integrating? I'm now integrating between T1 and T2, right? My inspiratory my TI, my inspiratory time. Does this look familiar to anybody? We know that an integral is nothing more than a handy way of calculating area under a curve, under a graph curve, right? Is there some sort of graph curve that we can look at here? And hopefully, even without really knowing calculus, this should become clear. And what I'm really looking at for work of breathing, when I look on my ventilator, what I'm really looking at is nothing more than the pressure function of time scalar. Pressure time scalar. So here's my scalar. I have time. I have pressure. And then I get my pressure time waveform. Maybe it looks uh, something like this. Okay, so I'm integrating between T1 and T2. Well, let's just say I make T1 here, okay? T2 here. So this is my inspiratory time. And all I'm doing is I'm finding area under the curve. And what area am I finding? I'm finding this area here. That's all my integration is. So really what we're doing is we're finding area under the curve of our pressure time scalar. How incredible is that? That we can bring this full circle right around to ventilator graphics. Okay, so one last thing I want to throw out there is that the, the normal work of breathing, somebody breathing air, is about 0.5 joules per liter. Um, higher than that, and that means we have to work harder to get that same amount of air, that same liter of air um, into the lungs. Okay guys, hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully you found that it was something maybe a little different and challenged you a little bit. Thanks again guys.